hi students in the last chapter we studied you know what a lens was how refraction through a lens takes place how images are formed when light is refracted through a lens in this chapter we are going to extend that discussion we are going to see you know what happens when two lenses like this are placed together where is the focus of the combined lens similarly we are going to learn about the combined angle of deviation of two lenses we are also going to learn about what happens when two lenses are placed at a distance d from each other interesting things like that so let's begin so now if two thin lenses are placed in contact with each other what will be the focal length of the combined two lens system so to find that out let's have an object you know which is at a distance u from the pole p now this distance u is assumed to be from both the lenses because the lenses are very thin so there's no difference between the distance of o from the first lens or from the second lens it's all the same and it's equal to u what will happen like where will the image be formed so first of all the light ray coming from the object o will travel through this first lens and an image i1 will be formed note that this is not the final image this is the image formed after refraction from the first lens that's why i've shown it with a dotted line because this ray will not actually come here this is the image that would have been formed you know had that had refraction occurred only through the first lens so the distance of this image from the lens system is taken to be v1 now clearly for the first lens 1 by f1 equal to 1 by v1 minus 1 by u f1 here is the focal length of the first lens v1 is where the image you know after refraction from the first lens is formed and u is the object distance now this image i1 will act as an object for the second lens right and then this image i will be formed here after refraction from the second lens and this image i will be at a distance v from the lens system so finally the object distance is u and the image distance is v and this distance v1 will be the object distance for the second lens so for the second lens if you write the equation only for refraction through the second lens 1 by f2 because f2 is the focal length of the second lens is equal to 1 by v the image distance minus 1 by v1 where v1 is the image distance in case of refraction from the first lens got it now let's add these two equations and see what happens this was the first equation this is the second equation when you add both these equations you get a very simple and interesting expression as you can see here 1 by v1 here and 1 by v1 here they both get cancelled so 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 comes out to be 1 by v minus 1 by u which is the same as 1 by capital f the final focal length of the lens system right and that is why the final focal length when two lenses are in contact is such that 1 by capital F is equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2. So we derived this expression, you know, when there were two lenses. But even if you have three lenses, four lenses, five lenses, 1 by capital F, where capital F is the combined focal length of the lens system, comes out to be sigma 1 by small f. That is, it's the sum of you know the reciprocals of all the individual focal lengths. Simple, isn't it? Since we know that 1 by f is the same as power. Remember we studied at the end of the last chapter that 1 by f is the power of a lens so therefore p the final power of the lens system is the summation of the net you know individual powers capital p equal to sigma small p so that's the first expression that we have derived and already we are ready to solve the problem hi students in the last chapter we studied you know what a lens was how refraction through a lens takes place how images are formed when light is refracted through a lens in this chapter we are going to extend that discussion we are going to see you know what happens when two lenses like this are placed together where is the focus of the combined lens similarly we are going to learn about the combined angle of deviation of two lenses we are also going to learn about what happens when two lenses are placed at a distance d from each other interesting things like that so let's begin so now if two thin lenses are placed in contact with each other what will be the focal length of the combined two lens system so to find that out let's have an object you know which is at a distance u from the pole p now 
this distance u is assumed to be from both the lenses because the lenses are very thin so there's no difference between the distance of o from the first lens or from the second lens it's all the same and it's equal to u what will happen like where will the image be formed so first of all the light ray coming from the object o will travel through this first lens and an image i1 will be formed note that this is not the final image this is the image formed after refraction from the first lens that's why i've shown it with a dotted line because this ray will not actually come here this is the image that would have been formed you know had that had refraction occurred only through the first lens so the distance of this image from the lens system is taken to be v1 now clearly for the first lens 1 by f1 equal to 1 by v1 minus 1 by u f1 here is the focal length of the first lens v1 is where the image you know after refraction from the first lens is formed and u is the object distance now this image i1 will act as an object for the second lens right and then this image i will be formed here after refraction from the second lens and this image i will be at a distance v from the lens system so finally the object distance is u and the image distance is v and this distance v1 will be the object distance for the second lens so for the second lens if you write the equation only for refraction through the second lens 1 by f2 because f2 is the focal length of the second lens is equal to 1 by v the image distance minus 1 by v1 where v1 is the image distance in case of refraction from the first lens got it now let's add these two equations and see what happens this was the first equation this is the second equation when you add both these equations you get a very simple and interesting expression as you can see here 1 by v1 here and 1 by v1 here they both get cancelled so 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 comes out to be 1 by v minus 1 by u which is the same as 1 by capital f the final focal length of the lens system right and that is why the final focal length when two lenses are in contact is such that 1 by capital F is equal to 1 by F1 plus 1 by F2. So we derived this expression, you know, when there were two lenses. But even if you have three lenses, four lenses, five lenses, 1 by capital F, where capital F is the combined focal length of the lens system, comes out to be sigma 1 by small f. That is, it's the sum of you know the reciprocals of all the individual focal lengths. Simple, isn't it? Since we know that 1 by f is the same as power. Remember we studied at the end of the last chapter that 1 by f is the power of a lens so therefore p the final power of the lens system is the summation of the net you know individual powers capital p equal to sigma small p so that's the first expression that we have derived and already we are ready to solve a problem in this problem there are two glass lenses as you can see and the space between these two glass lenses is filled with bromine that's a red liquid the focal length of the glass lenses is given to be 1.5 f when they were placed in air that is when there was no bromine here these two glass lenses had a focal length of 1.5 f both of them and the refractive index of the glass lenses is given to be 1.5 bromine has a refractive index of 1.66 we have to find the focal length of the system given that the lens are equiconvex the word equiconvex means that the radius of curvature of both the sides of the lenses is the same now how will we solve this problem we want to find the final focal length of the system if we observe carefully we'll see that there's there are two glass lenses here and there is one bromine lens here a concave bromine lens so the final focal length of the system can be found by saying 1 by capital f is equal to 1 by f glass plus 1 by f glass plus 1 by f bromine right now how will we find the focal length of bromine after all that is not given we will use the lens makers formula remember the formula we studied in the last chapter 1 by f equal to mu2 by mu1 minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 in this case mu2 is taken to be the medium of the lens so this is mu2 and mu1 is taken to be the medium surrounding the lens so this will be mu1 mu2 is given mu1 is given r1 
will be equal to R2 in this case because as you can see the radii of curvature are all the same here because these are identical equiconvex lenses but what is the value of R? how will we find that out? we will find that out by applying the lens makers formula in case of the glass lenses let's see how in case of the glass lens 1 by 1.5 f because the focal length of each of the glass lenses is 1.5 f is equal to 1.5 divided by 1 because mu2 for the glass lens is 1.5 and this focal length is given to be, the, be their focal length in air so air has a refractive index of 1 so mu1 will be 1 minus 1 into 1 by r minus 1 by minus r so again if you look carefully we've simply applied the lens makers formula for the glass lens why because we know the focal length in this case and we want to find this radius of curvature of the glass lens so that we can use it you know here to apply the lens makers formula for the concave lens as you can see here we've used the radius of curvature with proper sign from this expression we get the value of the radius of curvature of the glass lenses as 1.5 f now we can substitute the value of r equal to 1.5 f here with r1 equal to r2 when we do that and when we put mu1 equal to 1.5 because the refractive index of glass surrounding this concave bromine lens is 1.5 and when we put mu2 equal to 1.66 because the refractive index of bromine is 1.66 this is what we get the focal length of bromine from this expression comes out to be minus 4.69 r which is equal to minus 7.03 f because r is equal to 1.5 f now we can use the formula that we just derived you know 1 by capital F equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 plus 1 by f3 in this case I have put minus here because F3 is negative so the focal length of the net lens system is 1 by 1.5 plus 1 by 1.5 minus 1 by 7.03 so the final focal length comes out to be 0.84 F that was easy wasn't it now let's proceed and study another concept let's calculate how the angle of deviation of a lens is calculated so have a look at this lens a ray from the object O is incident at height H from the principal axis as you can see the incident ray makes an angle alpha with the principal axis and the refracted ray makes an angle beta with the principal axis now what is the angle of deviation it is basically the net deviation in the path of the light ray after it has crossed the lens so in this case if you look carefully this will be the angle of deviation here right because had the ray not been deviated it would have gone along this dotted line so the difference in angle between the refracted ray and this dotted line is the angle of deviation now from 10th class geometry we know that delta should clearly be equal to alpha plus beta so delta is alpha plus beta now we also know that if alpha and beta are very small that is the rays you know the ray that is incident on the lens is almost normal to the lens it's it's definitely not parallel to the surface of the lens then alpha can be approximated to be tan alpha and beta becomes tan beta now we know that tan alpha is equal to h divided by po and we know that tan beta is h divided by pi so delta is approximately equal to h by po plus h by pi if you look carefully pi is the image distance v and po is the object distance which we can write as minus u since it is in the negative x direction when we simplify this expression we get delta equal to h into 1 by v minus 1 by u but 1 by v minus 1 by u is 1 by f so the net angle of deviation in case of any lens convex or concave is equal to h by f this is a standard formula that you must remember now let's calculate the focal length of a system in which two lenses are separated by a distance d the focal length of the first lens is f1 and the focal length of the second lens is f2 as you can see a ray is coming towards f1 it is getting refracted it is going towards the second lens and it's getting refracted again let delta 1 
be the deviation caused by the first lens let delta 2 be the deviation in the ray caused by the second lens then the net deviation suffered by the incident ray because of these two lenses will be delta equal to delta 1 plus delta 2 isn't it let's also assume that the height where the first ray strikes the lens is h1 and where the ray strikes the second lens that height is h2 so as we just said delta equal to delta 1 plus delta 2 now what is delta clearly delta will be equal to h1 divided by capital F that's because h1 is the height at which the incident ray strikes the entire lens system and capital F is the focal length of the entire lens system which is what we want to calculate delta 1 is h1 by f1 we just calculated right that delta is h by f so for delta 1 will be h1 by f1 similarly delta 2 will be h2 by f2 because h2 is the height at which the incident ray strikes the second lens and f2 is the focal length of the second lens now if we divide this whole equation by h1 we get this expression our aim as I already said is to find the value of this capital F here in terms of f1, f2 and d the distance between the lenses now if you look carefully what is tan delta 1 isn't it equal to h1 minus h2 divided by d because you know this distance here is clearly d and this distance here is clearly h1 minus h2 right so clearly tan delta 1 is h1 minus h2 divided by d now if that is so h1 minus h2 can be written as d delta 1 this approximation can be made when delta 1 is a very small angle because you know when delta is very small then tan delta is approximately equal to delta so now what is delta 1 we know that it's equal to h1 by f1 so when we substitute h1 by f1 in the place of delta 1 we get this expression for h2 and we can substitute this h2 here in this expression I know it's slightly complicated mathematics but yes it will help us derive an expression for the final focal length now when we substitute the value of h2 in this expression h1 cancels off and the final value of 1 by capital F that we get is 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 minus d divided by f1 f2 so this is again a formula that you must remember when two lenses are separated by a distance d the net focal length you know of the system is given by the formula 1 by capital F is equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 minus d by f1 f2 now one interesting point that you must remember in this case is that delta must be a very small angle this is because in this expression you know in deriving this expression we've assumed that tan delta is approximately equal to delta we've assumed that again tan delta 1 is approximately equal to delta 1 and we've assumed the same thing for delta 2 also so as you can see delta delta 1 and delta 2 the net deviation suffered by the incident ray must be very small that's the only condition for this formula to be valid now let's move on and solve an IIT problem a convex lens A of focal length 20 cm and a concave lens B of focal length 5 cm are kept along the same axis with a distance D between them if a parallel beam of light falling on A leaves B as a parallel beam then what is the value of D so what's happening in this question the question says that a convex lens a focal length 20 centimeters is placed like this and after a distance d from this convex lens a concave lens of focal length 5 centimeters is placed when parallel rays strike the convex lens they are so refracted by both the lenses that they become parallel to the principal axis after passing through the concave lens we have to find the distance d now this question is clearly conceptual now how do rays become parallel to the principal axis in case of a concave lens they become parallel to the principal axis when you know they are falling on the concave lens in such a way that they appear to meet at the focus of the concave lens when extended so you can say that this point here can be taken to be the focus of the concave lens because we know that by the you know rules of formation of an image in case of lenses rays become parallel to the principal axis after passing through a concave lens only when they are incident such that they appear 
to meet at the focus of the concave lens when extended. So clearly this means that this distance here, you know, between the lens and the point where the rays meet, the distance is 5 centimeters. Another interesting fact is that rays parallel to the principal axis when incident on a convex lens meet at the focus. So these rays, you know, would have met at the focus had there been no concave lens here. Therefore, this distance, you know, from here, from the convex lens to the point where the rays meet has to be equal to f convex. And we know that this is equal to 20 centimeters. So as you can clearly see, d plus 5 centimeters is equal to 20 centimeters, right? Therefore, d is equal to 20 minus 5 or 15 centimeters. So the distance between the lenses is 15 centimeters. As you can clearly see, this problem simply involved the concepts, you know, that we've discussed so far in case of lenses. The simple concept, you know, that rays parallel to the principal axis meet at the focus, the rays which appear to meet at the focus of a concave lens become parallel to the principal axis. So simple concepts, you know, you remember them and you can solve IIT problems. Let's solve another one. Two thin convex lenses of focal lengths f1 and f2 are separated by a horizontal distance d and their centers are displaced by a vertical separation delta as shown. Taking the origin of coordinates o at the center of the first lens system here, find the x and y coordinates of the focus of this lens system. Hmm. So basically they have given us two lenses here. The second lens is displaced delta upwards from the principal axis and we have to find the focal length of this you know complete system but when we find the focus of this system we have to specify you know the x and y coordinates of the focus from the origin here o so what will be our approach now when we think of this question the first thing that comes to mind is to use the formula that we just derived that you know 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 minus d by f1 f2 is equal to 1 by the combined focal length of the system but the point is in this case they are asking us to find the x and y coordinates of the focus of this lens now in the case when 1 by f is equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 minus d by f1 f2 what are we doing we are replacing these two lenses here you know with one combined lens right now the point is we haven't yet derived where this combined lens will be placed like where that lens with focus f will be placed like will it be placed at the origin will it be placed in the middle will it be placed here where will it be placed we haven't derived that because that's too complicated an expression in this case they're asking us the x and y coordinates of the focus so since we don't know where this lens will be placed we don't know you know from what point this distance f will be measured and that is the reason why we'll have to derive the expression for the focal length of this lens system from the basics because whenever they ask you x and y coordinates you have to derive the expression from the basics had they asked you what is the combined focal length of the system then we could have you know used this formula let's go and derive this focal length from the basics now we know that when rays are parallel to the principal axis they meet at the focus so if we can calculate you know the position where the image is formed when two rays parallel to the principal axis you know strike this whole lens system then we'll get the focus of this lens system right so what we have to do is we have to calculate the final image formed when these two parallel rays are striking the first convex lens right so let's form the final image now first of all these two parallel rays will get refracted from this lens and when that happens they'll form an image i1 here now this image i1 will then serve as the object for the second lens and you know then because of this object i1 the final image of the lens system will be formed by the second lens and then that distance of the final image from this origin will give us the value of the focus so for the second lens let's use the equation 1 by v minus 1 by u equal to 1 by f to calculate the value of v the final image formed as you can see for the second lens 1 by v which is the final image formed by both the lenses minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f2 f2 is the focal length of the second lens 
Now what is u for the second lens? As I said i1 will serve as the object for the second lens. So what is the distance of i1 from the second lens? Clearly you know this distance i1 from the first lens will be equal to the focal length of the first lens because had these rays you know not encountered the second lens then when you extend them they, they would have met at the focus. Why? Because rays parallel to the principal axis after refraction from a convex lens meet at the focus. So clearly the distance of I1 from the second lens is this, right? U. Now clearly U is equal to F1 minus D and that is exactly what we've written here, isn't it? So this gives us the value of V, the point where the final image is formed v comes out to be this expression f2 into f1 minus d by f2 plus f1 minus d this is v as you can clearly see this distance v from the second lens represents the focal point of the entire lens system because this is where the final image is formed when two parallel rays are incident on the lens system so let's say you know this final image is i2 and the distance as we can clearly see from the second lens is v but we have to find the x coordinate and the y coordinate of this point i2 the final image the x coordinate of i2 will clearly be equal to d plus v right because the distance v that we calculated is from the second lens so the distance of i2 from the first lens is equal to d plus v which is this expression so the x coordinate of the focus is f1 f2 plus d into f1 minus d divided by f1 plus f2 minus d now how do we find out the y coordinate of this image i2 right because we have to find both the x and y coordinates of the focus now if you consider the first image i1 that is formed only after refraction from the first lens remember we when we extended the rays coming from the first lens they formed an image i1 and this i1 acted as an object for the second lens now if you carefully look at i1 then you'll notice that it is at a distance delta from the principal axis of the second lens right that is what is given so it is actually equivalent to you know an object with length delta that is placed you know inverted on the principal axis of the second lens now we know that the height of the image in the case when the object length is delta will be equal to m delta so this length here of the image you know the final image that is formed you know whose x coordinates we just calculated the height of that image will be m delta and the y coordinates of i2 will therefore be delta minus m delta you know this will be the y coordinate here and this distance will be equal to delta minus m delta right but m can be found out because we know that m is equal to v by u and we've already calculated v we just calculated it and we know that u is clearly equal to you know f1 minus d therefore here we have m equal to v by u and i've substituted the value of v and the value of u this expression here is v and this expression here is u now when we simplify this expression this is what we get as you can clearly see this is the value of magnification so now what is the final y coordinate of the focus of the lens system the final y coordinate is clearly delta minus m delta as i already explained that is delta into 1 minus m when we simplify that this is the final y coordinate of the focal length of the system now let's you know just have a look at what we've calculated just to make it clearer if you consider this two lens system as one thing you know one lens system then when rays parallel to the principal axis strike this lens system they meet at this point i2 and the x coordinate and y coordinate of i2 is what we have calculated the x coordinate is this expression and the y coordinate is this expression so that's the final answer now let's move on to the next concept Newton's formula now we already know that when a lens is placed in a medium of refractive index mu its focal length can be calculated by the lens makers formula for example if this lens you know with a refractive index mu2 is placed in a medium of refractive index mu1 then its focal length will be 1 by f equal to mu2 by mu1 
minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. The problem arises when this lens is placed in a medium such that the refractive index of the medium to the left of it is different from the refractive index of the medium to the right of it. In that case, we have no specific formula to calculate the focal length of the lens. In fact, an interesting observation is the focal length of the lens is the same on both sides if the medium on both sides is the same. After all, that's why we're calculating, you know, one single focal length by using the lens maker's formula. But the focal length on both the sides is different when the refractive index of the mediums on both the sides are different. So if the medium on the left side of the lens has a refractive index of say mu a and the medium on the right side of the lens has a refractive index, you know, mu b. In that case, this focal length will be f1 and this will be f2. Both of them will not be the same. In this case, when the medium on the left of the lens has a different refractive index from the medium on the right of the lens, the relationship between f1 and f2 is given by the Newton's formula. And that is what we are going to look at right now. So let us derive Newton's formula. Have a look at this system, you know. You see a lens, you see that on the left of the lens there is a medium of refractive index mu1. On the right of the lens there is a medium of refractive index mu3. What we want to calculate is the relationship between the focal lens, you know, PF1 and PF2 of the lens in this case. Because that's what the Newton's formula is. Now all these rays here might seem complicated, but all that we've done is that we've placed an object here at a point O and we formed an inverted of image of it at the point I. As you can see, rays parallel to the principal axis of the lens, you know, falling on the convex lens. They pass through the focus of the lens and rays which pass through the focus of the lens become parallel to the principal axis after refraction. So we formed our image here. Now, in this system, let the distance OF2 be equal to X1. This X1 is the distance of the object from one of the foci of the lens, F2. The focal length of the lens is F1. That's the first focal length of the lens. And the second focal length of the lens is F2. Similarly, just as, you know, X1 was the distance of the object from F2, X2 is the distance of the image from F1. It is the distance of the image from the second focus of the lens. Now, if you consider these two triangles here, triangle AOF2 and triangle F2PQ. You can see that they're similar to each other. That's because one of the angles of these triangles is 90 degrees. And these two angles here, this one and this one, are virtually opposite angles. So both these triangles are similar to each other. Now since they are similar to each other, AO upon PQ dash is equal to X1 upon minus F1. We've substituted the value of F1 with proper sign. And clearly since PQ dash is the same as IA dash. After all, you know, this ray is parallel to the principal axis. So PQ dash is the same as IA dash. So we can replace PQ dash by IA dash here. So AO by IA dash is equal to AO by PQ dash is equal to X1 by minus F1. If you consider these two triangles here, they're again similar. And in this case, you can clearly see that PQ divided by IA dash is equal to F2 by X2. Note that we've taken positive signs here, since these values are taken in the positive x direction, you know, in the direction of the incident ray. Now, PQ upon IA dash can also be written as AO upon PQ dash, because after all, PQ is the same as AO here. And IA dash, as we already know, is the same as PQ dash here, right? So, if you look at both these two expressions carefully, you'll see that AO upon PQ dash is X1 by minus F1, and AO upon PQ dash is F2 by X2 also. So that means X1 by minus F1 and F2 by X2 are the same. So by using simple 10th class geometry, we finally derived an expression that relates F1 and F2, the two focal lengths of the lens. When we simplify this expression, this is what we get. X1, X2 equal to F1, F2. X1 is the distance of the object from one focus of the lens. X2 is the distance of the image from the other focus of the lens and f1 and f2 are the two focal lengths of our lens as you can see there's a minus sign here too what will happen you know in the case when the media on both sides of the lens are the same in that case f1 will be equal to f2 
and therefore x1 x2 will be equal to f square so this formula here is called the Newton's formula understood one interesting way of finding the focal length of a convex lens is to use the displacement method so let's learn about the displacement method in this method the student you know he places an object before the convex lens and you know sees where the image is formed then he changes the position of the lens in such a way that you know for the same position of the object the image is again formed you know at the same location I can understand you know you must be feeling that how can the image be formed at the same location for the same location of the object for two positions of the lens but this is true and you know that's what we'll explore this does happen and based on the values of V and U that the student obtains he calculates the focal length like let's see how all this is done let's you know assume that an object is placed at a distance U from this lens and the image is formed at a distance V from the lens the distance between the object and the image can be taken to be A now clearly 1 by V minus 1 by minus u equal to 1 by f like if we substitute u with the proper sign since the incident ray will travel from the object to the lens that is from left to right so we've written you know the object distance as minus u so that comes out to be 1 by v plus 1 by u equal to 1 by f with proper sign that is now one interesting thing is if you look at this formula if we replace u by v that is if we change the object distance in such a way that we replace it by the image distance obtained in the first case then clearly the image distance obtained in the second case will be equal to the object distance that was used in the first case did you get it because V and U here can be interchanged so if this lens is placed at a distance V from the object instead of being placed at a distance U from the object then the image will be formed at a distance U from the lens instead of being formed at a distance V from the lens right so let's say we move this lens so that it is at a distance v from the object then the image will be formed at a distance u from the lens what is clear in both cases is that the distance between the object and the image will be the same in both these cases because in the first case the object distance was u and the image distance was v in the second case the object distance is v and the image distance is u let the distance between the two lenses be d clearly V plus U is equal to A that is obvious from this figure right but another thing that is not so obvious is that V minus U is equal to D because here as you can see this distance is V this distance is D and clearly this distance here is V minus D and as you can clearly see this distance is U so therefore V minus D is U here v minus u is d now if we solve these two equations v plus u equal to a and v minus u equal to d we can get the value of v and u v is a plus d by 2 and u is a minus d by 2 but we already know that 1 by f equal to 1 by b minus 1 by minus u and that gives us the value of the focal length by displacement method f equal to a square minus t square by 4a you must of course remember that A here is the distance between the object and the image and D here is the distance between the two positions of the lens now let's find out some more things you know based on this very experiment one conclusion that you can draw you know from this value of focal length is that D is square root of A into square root of A minus 4F but if that is so a must be greater than 4f and that is an important condition for this experiment to be successful the distance between the object and the image must be greater than 4 times the focal length of the lens understood now again let's you know move on to some more interesting facts that we can deduce if you look at you know the magnification caused by the lens in its first position when the object distance was u and when the image distance was v clearly m1 is v upon minus u in the second case when the object distance is v and the image distance is u in that case the magnification is u upon minus v right now 
magnification when the lens is placed in both positions you know if you multiply the magnification in both the cases you get one that's interesting because that means that you know the magnitude by which the lens magnifies an object when placed at this position is the exact reciprocal you know of how much the lens magnifies the object when placed in this position so as we just derived m1 m2 equal to 1 and that means that the length of the image divided by the length of the object in the first case into the length of the image divided by the length of the object in the second case is equal to 1 so this is the next interesting correlation that we are drawing what this means is that the length of the object or the height of the object is equal to square root of the height of the first image into the height of the second image square root of this expression now m1 is v over u therefore m1 is also equal to u plus d by u this is because from this figure it is clearly evident that u plus d is equal to v right u d v therefore u can be written as d by m1 minus 1 now v is clearly m1 into u that's because m1 is v over u so we've got this value of u in terms of m1 we've got this value of v in terms of m1 and if we put both these values you know of u and v in terms of m1 in the expression 1 by f equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u then this is what we get f is equal to d divided by m1 minus 1 by m1 but we know that m1 m2 equal to 1 therefore 1 by m1 can also be written as m2 this is another expression of the focal length again you know used in the displacement experiment which you must remember this is the focal length expressed in terms of the magnifications m1 in this case as you know is the magnification of the first image and m2 is the magnification in case of the second image so if the magnifications of the images you know formed in both the positions of the lens in case of a displacement experiment is given and the distance between the two positions of the lens are given you can find the focal length of the lens let's get a hang of the displacement method you know and see what the student actually does in the laboratory when he tries to calculate the focal length of a convex lens using the displacement method you know just for fun so you know the student places an object at a particular reading of the meter scale okay, let's say he's placed an object at x equal to 50 now he adjusts the lens you know so that the image formed by the lens is formed on a screen that he places at a standard distance a from the object so as you can see you know he, he'll move the lens here 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 and as you can see a virtual image is being formed finally at this particular point he will observe that an image on the screen is formed as you can see in this case the position of the lens is you know around um, 140 centimeters he notes down this reading he then keeps moving the lens forward again and again and again until the image is again formed on the screen I know the image is barely visible but it's a small image here being formed on the screen you can make that out because the rays are meeting on the screen and in this case he again notes down the reading say it's around 420 centimeters he notes down the difference between these two readings in this case it's 276.9 centimeters and as you can see using the value of D and the value of A that is 450 centimeters he can clearly calculate the value of focal length because we just derived the value of focal length in terms of D and A so that's the displacement method for you let's get a hang of the displacement method you know and see what the student actually does in the laboratory when he tries to calculate the focal length of a convex lens using the displacement method you know just for fun so you know the student places an object at a particular reading of the meter scale okay, let's say he's placed an object at x equal to 50 now he adjusts the lens you know so that the image formed by the lens is formed on a screen that he places at a standard distance a from the object so as you can see you know he, he'll move the lens here 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 and as you can see a virtual image is being formed finally at this particular point he will observe 
that an image on the screen is formed as you can see in this case the position of the lens is you know around um, 140 centimeters he notes down this reading he then keeps moving the lens forward again and again and again until the image is again formed on the screen I know the image is barely visible but it's a small image here being formed on the screen you can make that out because the rays are meeting on the screen and in this case he again notes down the reading say it's around 420 centimeters he notes down the difference between these two readings in this case it's 276.9 centimeters and as you can see using the value of D and the value of A that is 450 centimeters he can clearly calculate the value of focal length because we just derived the value of focal length in terms of D and A so that's the displacement method for you now let's solve a problem to clear some of our concepts when an object is at distances alpha and beta from a lens a real image and a virtual image with magnifications of magnitude M are formed find the focal length of the lens now let's solve a problem to clear some of our concepts when an object is at distances alpha and beta from a lens a real image and a virtual image with magnifications of magnitude m are formed find the focal length of the lens so what is being said in this case is that first an object is placed in front of a lens at a distance alpha and then the object is placed in front of his lens at a distance beta from the lens in one case a real image is formed and in the other case a virtual image is formed and in both the cases the magnification is m we have to find the focal length of the lens now there is one interesting fact here that a real image and a virtual image are both formed by the same lens now this can happen only in case of a convex lens because a concave lens always forms a virtual image now let's consider the first case when a real image is formed by this convex lens let's say this object here is placed at a distance alpha from the lens if the object is at a distance alpha from the lens obviously the inverted image will be at a distance m alpha from the convex lens this is because magnification is v over u so the image distance will definitely be m alpha similarly in the case when the object is placed at a distance beta from the lens a virtual image is formed behind the object because in the case of a convex lens a virtual image is only formed behind the object and the distance of this virtual image from the convex lens will be m beta isn't it so let's write the equation you know 1 by f equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u in both cases so 1 by m alpha minus 1 by minus alpha equal to 1 by f in the case when the object is at a distance alpha from the convex lens in this case m alpha is v and u is minus alpha because the object is placed to the left of the convex mirror you know that's why we've put minus here what will be the equation when the object is placed at a distance beta from the convex lens the equation will be 1 by minus m beta minus 1 by minus beta equal to 1 by f in this case you know v will be minus m beta as you can clearly see here you see the incident ray from the object will move towards the convex lens in this direction so clearly you know the magnitude of v is m beta and you have to add a minus sign because the distance v in this case is being measured opposite to the direction of the incident ray the distance of the object from the lens is clearly minus u and this is equal to 1 by f when you solve both these equations you get f equal to alpha plus beta by 2 and that is the focal length of this convex lens that's our final answer you see so if you understand the, you know all these concepts whatever we have discussed in these chapters related to optics you can solve any problem on this earth with a cool head that's it the next concept that we're going to study is the principle of reversibility this is a principle that states that when you replace the image that is formed in any optical system by the object like this I've replaced the image by the object then the new image will be formed at the exact position of the object so as you can see if the object is here and the image is here and I replace you know this image here with the object then the new image will be such 
that it will be at the exact position of the object, you know, where the object was earlier. Isn't that interesting? The principle of reversibility also states that when you replace the image with the object, the light rays retrace their path. So when you know the object is here and the image is here, light is going like this. When the object is here and the image is here, the light ray is going like this. So this is actually a very interesting principle, isn't it? We always considered this to be obvious, but now we're like really realizing this fact. One, you know, corollary that results from this reversibility principle is that if a light ray retraces its paths even once during its travels through a optic optical system, it will retrace its entire path. So, you know, if any light ray, you know, is striking the mirror like this, if at any stage in the optical system, it retraces the exact path, you know, even for one millimeter or even for one nanometer, if it retraces the exact path, following which it came and was incident in the optical system then it will retrace the entire path that is the reason you know why rays which are incident normally on a concave mirror they go back and the image is formed exactly at the position of the object a nice phenomenon this is the next concept we'll discuss is the concept of conjugate foci now you might think you know that this concept is about a special kind of foci you know some special lenses have some special focus points no that's not the case the simple truth is that the object and the image are called the conjugate foci of each other so the image is the conjugate focus of the object and the object is the conjugate focus of the image simple isn't it this is because all the rays that emanate from the object meet at the image and all the rays that emanate from the image meet at the object. In our earlier definition of focus, we had decided that the focus is the point where all the rays coming from infinity meet in case of any lens. So you can, you know, think about a similar concept behind naming the object as the conjugate focus of the image and naming the image as the conjugate focus of the object. But you get the drift, right? So this was the last concept of our chapter. So that's the end of refraction at spherical surfaces part 2. The next concept we'll discuss is the concept of conjugate foci. Now you might think you know that this concept is about a special kind of foci you know some special lenses have some special focus points. No that's not the case. The simple truth is that the object and the image are called the conjugate foci of each other. So the image is the conjugate focus of the object and the object is the conjugate focus of the image. Simple isn't it? This is because all the rays that emanate from the object meet at the image. And all the rays that emanate from the image meet at the object. In our earlier definition of focus, we had decided that the focus is the point where all the rays coming from infinity meet in case of any lens. So you can, you know, think about a similar concept behind naming the object as the conjugate focus of the image and naming the image as the conjugate focus of the object. But you get the drift, right? So this was the last concept of our chapter. So that's the end of refraction at spherical surfaces part 2.